on, let's see what happens. 6-2 powering up. I can hear my voice. Can't hear yours. Like, I can hear your voice, like, directly, just not on stream. Does it sound better? Uh, let's see here. Stream. Does it sound too loud? Test, 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 test. Oh, look, it sounds a lot better. It sounds a lot better. Okay. Let's just. Talk. Well, maybe then it's probably. We'll we'll see once the music starts up again because right now you're it's paused. Oh, that's better. Okay, yeah, that's better. It sounds that a lot sounds better now. Fine. Yeah, it sounds fine now. Well, you can't, you don't plug it right into the tablet, there's a stock. Yeah. All you have to do is Thanks. just, what you have to do is just plug the thing into the dock, and then you hook, and then there's a, hook the dock up to the TV, and bam. Eliminate tag. I do have a couple games on it. I'll like to test out. Genesis, but that has. Oh, yeah, Genesis, but that's Japanese. It's on PS4, so I don't really. Would need to buy it again unless I want the DLC, but the DLC is not really worth it. Because yeah, besides the C Gundam and Penelope, they're kind of subpar. Well, and then I thought I thought they were already in, uh, in the other GPS. Yeah, for free, which makes no sense. Uh, and he, I mean, Dark History Tour, I mean, Dark History Tour is back, and by far the best unit in the game, so. And he's got more attacks. Alright, so, yeah, I got two games here that I downloaded off the uh, eShop. Now, is eShop, like, overly overpriced? Uh, the games I bought were, like, under $10, so it's... But I do know there are some... Most of the games are pretty much standard, sixty dollars. Uh, the the indie stuff usually go for about twenty bucks. Uh, the arcade stuff 
It's usually about ten dollars. Yeah, Nintendo likes to treat their stuff like gold, so that's why their stuff never ever goes low in price. Super Mario Galaxy is still fucking forty bucks, so. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah, so I do have two games on here. It really Powering up. PS1 graphics. Give me another. Oh, I got Chrono Trigger. And that's by and the, the DS version of Chrono Trigger is usually the best version of the game. First up, okay. Stop looping around. Get some back to soldier. I got you the rasser. So I got Strikers 1945-2 and Wonder Boy. Wasn't there uh, like a game that was Yeah, that was that's Strikers. Oh it is? Yeah, 1945. There is a game called 1942, but that's not by the same developer. Uh, Strikers 1945 is developed by Psycho, I think they're called. Apparently, so far, this isn't on PSN, so I think this is like a Nintendo exclusive thing. What's really interesting is that we didn't get, North America didn't get Strikers 1945. So I guess I'll call this Nintendo Switch uh. screen test. See an Overwatch tournament going on, don't care for that. Why is this not the team? There we go. Channel. Scans indicator. Hull is weakening Delta Squad. We're coming in for a striping run. Keep firing. Strikers. Nineteen forty five. Target locked. But yeah, that was the full hell game I was talking about with that weird bio weapon. That was the final boss. Siv, where are you? Lost a signal, boss. We'll find it again, damn it. Squad, regroup. We're going after Siv. Negative, negative 3-8. Your orders came through from the Jedi Generals. Clear the area. Evac now. I don't care if they came from Master Yoda himself. As a matter of fact, they Soldier, now get your squad out of there. Blast our orders. Forty. He's right, boss. We gotta evac. Sir, we have to go back. Oh no. 
Oh yeah, seriously. Japanese Spider-Man is the most bizarre shit you'll ever see. He uses a machine gun. He's got a weird wrist thing. He has a giant robot. He rides motorcycles, even though he can, you know, he's got the powers of a spider. And now the invasion has begun. Republic assault ship on Vector 6. Hostiles to starboard, ready guns. Fire solution in two seconds. Let's just give this a little bit of fun. Let's play, let's play a little bit of Striker before we actually stream. Look, it's the I'm trying to get the feel of this controller, but it's just that. I'm not really digging it. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll patch you through right away. Okay, we're gonna go with the Falk Wolf. I don't know what that. I have never been good at pronouncing that name, that plane's name. Okay. It's a solid port of a classic arcade game, but I do have one big issue with it. When you play this in portable mode. The side scroll. You know how arcades have that. It's just like one line yep. of visuals, and it's just sandwiched with these uh, yep. backgrounds. That doesn't go away f when you put this in portable mode. So you end up with this very small screen. It's solid, but it's two solid is definitely game, a lot better. Two has a has a legit story to it. Um, um, I would recommend. I would also recommend Force Unleashed, like the HD version. Yes. I play. I would like that game a lot. I do not recommend Force Unleashed two. That one kind of sucks. Um, I was I was quite confused. I yeah, knew I mean, that the creators said like this was not canon whatsoever. 
they yeah. specifically said this is a what if story. Yeah. For the course of these games. And they're saying it was all a what if. It was all a theoretical story of what could have happened if Darth Vader had a secret apprentice. Yeah. And it, it kind of made sense in a theoretical standpoint. Because, you know, if Sidious found out that he had an apprentice underneath him... Yeah, well, because rule of two... He would either be... kill the apprentice... Or kill Vader. Or, or kill Vader. Because, you know, rule of two, you can't violate that. Yeah. And, um... In... What Darth Vader was also planning in, in Force Unleashed was... Was to... It, once you kind of figured out the story was, you know... He wanted... I guess you could say Darth Vader was kind of bored, and he wanted war. Yeah. Um, he allowed Galen Marin to start the war, to go out and form the Republic, or the Rebellion, I should say. And, um, and uh, Galen Merrick's uh, family crest was used for the Rebellion. It was kind of like how things were starting. Yeah. And then um, I really shouldn't be spoiling too much because the game is. Force Unleashed series is a solid game. Both. Of yeah. Them. Um. I mean, as game Force Unleashed two is great. I just didn't like the story. Yeah. The story was hot garbage, if you ask me. Well, the thing was is that they ran out of ideas, so they just yeah, oh, yeah. like, oh, <laughs> we'll just make him clone. And, and yet, uh, somehow, yeah. it still has a better story than The Last Jedi. Oh my gosh, can we not? <laughs> <laughs> Disney does not know. Uh, like, I, I hate to bring it up, but it's, it's, well, it's, it's not, sadly it's canon not now. It's not necessarily Disney's fault. It's it Kathleen isn't. Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy does not know what the hell she's doing. Um, the thing is, is that she thinks putting identity politics before a story is much more important. Which she is totally wrong. You cannot do that. There is no story that has actually survived by shoving the stuff down your throat. I mean, yeah. we've seen this with Seed Destiny. I mean, with Seed Destiny, they shoved, they shoved the anti-war message down okay. your throat to the point that well, you just don't give a shit anymore. Here, here's the thing. As much as I hate to say this, but Seed did it right. <laughs> the first one was, eh, that the was first debatable. One. The first one. As much as I hate to say it, the, the show with the anti-war story, now really Gundam in general was, was supposed to be an anti-war Yeah, it's story. always been, but but, but the problem, my problem with that was with Wing and Sea that it, they just beat you over 